Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, our lesson is about linear functions. Our objectives today are that you, the student, will identify linear functions using a graph, table, and equations. You will be able to graph linear functions using discrete or continuous data. And you will use this to write real life problems to fit the data. So really, our main focus here is relative to discrete and continuous data. We're going to use our prior knowledge of linear functions, review that, and then apply that to the next level. So the next step would be to determine whether or not it was discrete or continuous data and how that applies to the real world. So today, as we go through the lesson, I want you thinking in your head, how can I determine whether a function is linear or nonlinear? And just while we're thinking about that, that's helping you think about the trend of the data. It's helping you think about the shape of the graph. But as we're doing this, once you can determine this, I need you to understand that both linear and nonlinear functions could be discrete or continuous. Okay, so let's keep going. So let's talk about identifying linear functions. A linear equation in two variables, x and y, is an equation that can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, where m and b are constants. So just to review that this is not an equation that you can solve because it has two unknowns, a y and an x. m here is the slope, b is the y-intercept. So this is what we call slope-intercept form, and it's a linear equation written in two variables, and it's the equation of a line. Okay, a linear function is a function whose graph is a non-vertical line. So remember, we can one of the reasons we say a linear function is a linear function is it passes the vertical line test. So a vertical line will fail the vertical line test. A linear function has a constant rate of change, and that will become very important for you to remember and understand that you can have a function, but a linear function must have a constant rate of change. And it can also be represented by a linear equation written in two variables. So if you can rearrange the terms of the equation to be in slope-intercept form, then it is a linear function. A nonlinear function does not have a constant rate of change, and its graph is not a line. All right, I would like you to determine whether or not this graph is linear or nonlinear and be able to explain your answer. Please pause and come back and check your answer. Welcome back. So this is a nonlinear function because the graph is not a line. It's still a function. It would pass the vertical line test but it's not a line, so it's not a linear function. So we'd say this is nonlinear. Try this one, pause, come back and hit play. Welcome back. This is a linear function. It is the graph of a line. Your turn. Does this table of values represent a linear or nonlinear function? Pause, come back and hit play. Welcome back. So we're looking at the rate of change. We're given a table of values. So you could graph these, but these are quite large values. So let's look at an easier way to determine this rather than graphing. So I'm going to look at the rate of change between the x terms and the y values. So I look at the x values, and it's increasing by 3 every time. The y values are decreasing by 6 every time. So Therefore, this is a linear function because as x increases by 3, y decreases by 6, giving us a constant rate of change. So if I were to talk about the slope of this line, then I would say the change in y all over the change in x simplify, and the slope would be negative 2. So the rate of change is negative 2.
Okay, your turn again. Does this table represent a linear or nonlinear function? Pause, come back and hit play. Welcome back. So we're looking for a constant rate of change. So the increase in x is constantly 2 by 2 by 2 by 2. Now let's look at the y. Increase by 7, increase by 11, increase by 15. That's not constant. So therefore, this is a nonlinear function because as x increases by 2, y de um, this should say increase, sorry, that's a typo, increases by different amounts. The rate of change is not constant. So is this linear or nonlinear and explain? Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. This is the graph of a line, so therefore it's a linear function. Your turn. Pause, come back and hit play when you're ready to check. Welcome back. This graph is a nonlinear function because the graph is not a line. This is an absolute value function. It does pass the vertical line test, but it is not a line because it does not go continuously in opposite directions. It has a change in direction, so therefore there's not a constant rate of change. The rate that this is increasing left to right is different. This is decreasing left to right. All right, your turn. Is this table represent linear or nonlinear pattern? Pause, come back and hit play. Welcome back. So we're going to look at the rate of change. So where x is increasing by 1, y is increasing by 2. So therefore, the function is linear because as x is increasing by 1, y is increasing by 2, giving you a constant rate of change. The change in y is 2 over an x increase of 1. So the slope here would be 2. Your turn. Linear or nonlinear and explain. Pause. Hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So we're going to identify the rate of change if there is one. So x is increasing by 1 as y decreases by 8, by 4, by 2. So these are different decrease rates than this increasing by 1 each time. So therefore, this is nonlinear because my explanation is as x is increasing by 1, y decreases by different amounts. The rate of change is not constant. All right, so let's look at this. Now we're going to be asked to identify linear functions using equations. So we have six equations here, and we're trying to determine whether or not they represent linear functions. This is as easy as saying to yourself, can it be written in slope-intercept form? So we're going to go through this. Our first one is y equals the square root of x. This cannot be written in the form y equals mx plus b because we have the square root sign here, okay? And the only way to simplify this would be to square both sides, and then you'd have y squared equals x, and you cannot have any variable have a value, an exponent greater than 1 or less than 1, okay? So this is not in the form y equals mx plus b, so it is not a linear function. y equals 3 to the x. That also is not a linear function because it cannot be written in slope-intercept form. This is what we call an exponential equation because the exponent is a variable, All right? y equals 2 over x. This is also nonlinear. It cannot be written in that form. Remember, this is if x is in the denominator, we could write this. This doesn't have an exponent of 1. If we rewrite it, it would be y equals 2 times x to the negative 1. This is what we call an inverse function, and it's nonlinear. y equals 3.8. That can be written in y equals mx plus b form. Remember, this is the equation of a horizontal line. It has a slope of 0. Remember, 0 times x is 0. So we end up with the equation y equals 3.8. It's a horizontal line, and that is a linear function. Our next equation, x squared minus y equals 0. This cannot be written in the form y equals mx plus b because x has an exponent other than 1. And our last, y equals 6 times the quantity x minus 1. 
that can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. If I distribute the 6, I get y equals 6x minus 6, and this is written in slope-intercept form, making it a linear function. All right, your turn. Is this equation represent a linear or nonlinear function? Pause, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. This is a linear function because it can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. It is written in the form y equals mx plus b. The slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 9. Try this one. Linear or nonlinear? Pause, hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. This is linear because it is written in the form y equals mx plus b, remembering that this can be rewritten as 3 fifths times x, and our y-intercept would be 0. We just don't need to write the add 0. So this is a linear function passing through the origin. Linear or nonlinear? Pause. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. This would be nonlinear because it cannot be written in the form y equals mx plus b. There is a variable with an exponent other than 1. All right, so we have five ways to represent a function. We could use words, so we can describe it saying the output is 3 more than the input, so kind of like a function rule. You could write an equation to represent your function. You could use an input-output table, so it could be vertical like this or horizontal like the ones we've seen in the practice problems today. You could see a mapping diagram where you're looking to see if every input has one unique output. Or you could be looking at a graph and use the vertical line test. So let's talk about graphing a linear function. A solution of a linear equation in two variables is an ordered pair. So remember, anytime you see a table of values, each ordered pair in that table is a solution to the linear equation or to any function. And that is what makes it, if you put the value in for x and solve for y, that is what you will get, and it makes the equation true. So the graph of a linear equation in two variables is a set of points, a set of infinite points in the coordinate plane, and that line represents all the solutions to that equation. So it's a visual representation of the solutions to an equation. Sometimes the points are discrete, meaning they're unconnected, and other times the point are continuous, meaning they're connected. Let's go through a few examples. So we have discrete and continuous functions. A discrete function has a domain or range that is a set of values that consists of only certain numbers in an interval. Typically, we focus on the domain here. So here we go. We have a function that represents the number of tickets purchased and their cost. Notice that these are not connected. It's a discrete function because each point stands alone and they're not connected. You cannot buy half a ticket or two and a half tickets or five and one third tickets. You need to buy whole number tickets. So therefore, you have discrete cost. Cost for one ticket, cost for three tickets, but you have no way to connect these because if you go to one and a half and up to the cost, it's irrelevant. You cannot buy one and a half tickets. A continuous function example is that when a domain or range has a set of values that consists of all numbers in an interval, okay? And again, we typically focus on the domain here. So let's talk about your age and your height. This is continuous because at one year and four months, you have a height. At two years and one month, you have a height. So you're continually growing or you continually have height. So there's not a point in your age where you don't have height. So therefore, this one would be continuous. All right, so I would like you to take time to look at this and graph the discrete data. So we're telling you that it's discrete, meaning you're not going to draw a line. It's not continuous. They've given you the equation, y equals 15.95x, representing the cost y in dollars of x tickets for a museum. Each customer can buy a maximum of four tickets. So we have a very small domain here. So I want you to find the domain and range of the function. Is, it, is the domain discrete or continuous? Be able to explain why and graph the function. All right, so you can hit pause and try this and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. 
So this linear function represents the cost y in dollars. So we have a domain because I can only buy a maximum of four tickets. So I can buy zero tickets, one ticket, two tickets, three tickets, four tickets. So there are five values in the domain. Don't forget zero. You could choose to buy zero tickets. This is discrete because you cannot buy half or a part of a ticket. Part B was to graph. Don't forget to title and add it labels to your axes. So we're going to the museum. The domain is my number of tickets purchased. My range is the cost of buying those tickets. And you can see my points. If I buy zero tickets, zero dollars. One ticket, fifteen ninety-five. Two tickets, three tickets, four tickets. Notice I just have points on here and they're not continuous. We don't draw a line. Okay, continuous data. We have a cereal bar containing 130 calories, and C is the number of calories consumed, and B is the number of bars eaten. So this situation represents a linear function, C equals 130B. As the number of bars B increased by one, the number of calories increases by 130. So we have our function here, it is a linear function, and calories is dependent on the number of bars. The domain is any number x greater than or equal to zero. So I could eat zero bars, and then I could eat part of a bar. So I could choose to eat one third of a bar, or half of a bar, or two and a quarter bars. But I cannot eat negative bars, okay? So it's continuous, and here's our graph. We titled cereal bars, our domain is the number of bars, and our y or our range is the number of calories. So if I eat zero bars, zero calories, and you can see this line represents eating part of a bar, 130 calories if I eat the whole bar, eating a bar and part of another bar, all the way up to two bars. So you can see that this data is continuous. So there we have it, discrete or concrete. Thanks for joining me today. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. And I hope this helps explain discrete and continuous functions.